The secret to the shimmy shimmy is the shimmy. Shimmy, 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 shake. Then you do the slap. Hey, guys, this is Tinsel. Hey. Tinsel, these are the guys. Look, I almost got hit by a double-decker bus today, and whew, Tinsel saved my life. Uh -huh. What? What'd you do that for? Do you know how much money we would have made on that insurance policy? He already said he'd give me his lava lamp. Yeah, but that thing sucks. It's a reissue from 1993. Guys, um, <laughs> I'm still here. It's not like the f***ing guy's a connoisseur of fine art or anything. I mean, he's got a Where's Waldo painting above his bed. Nobody does have that loincloth from Squanto. It's pure leather. It's got to be worth something. Guys, I can hear you! Look, I, I was thinking, Tinsel, maybe you could stay here for a couple of days. Oh. She's moving here. And it's the least I can do till she finds an apartment. Aw, yeah. thanks. You're so sweet. Yeah, make yourself at home. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I like this spot right here. Oh, it's like it's been worked in. Excuse me, can you move your hand? Are you trying to touch my boob? Um, Bigfoot, can you put your feet down? That's where people eat. Hey, this is Stevie Solace, and welcome to Arbor Live. Tonight we got a pretty musical show. First we have Lily Frost, whose keyboard playing and melodic structures are pretty amazing. We have Ken Tizard, who's kind of known in Canada and Toronto as this sort of eclectic rock and roll guitar player. He's taken pedal steel guitar, he runs it through some type of amplification, he's got a pretty unique sound, and I think you're going to dig it. Also rounding up the night is the all-female jam band, Rouge. So stick around, buckle up, and let's do this thing called Arbor Live. I got balls of steel and a head full of big ideas If you push too hard you might find that I push back You can put me up on a pedestal and it suits you Build a monument to Surprised what a man might do You can take me out to dinner when it suits you You can tell your friends that you're a friend of mine You can bury me with reasons, laws, and bullshit you can hide behind intentions and your lines But when you turn your back and you fall asleep on me Don't be surprised what a man might do Don't be surprised 
Don't be afraid at all. Don't be surprised what a man might do. Hey, Tinsel. Yeah. I see you're watching the special parliamentary sittings of the Provincial House of Commons. Is this Shakespeare? Shut up for a second. They're starting their second seating. It's game time. It's game time. It's game time. Hey, what the hell is this? We're watching football today. What is this? Tinsel. Huh? Today's the playoffs. We've got to watch the game today. It's a big game. Uh -uh. Are you kidding me? Tinsel, this is our house. You can't tell us we can't watch the game. We do this every week. You gotta go somewhere else and watch this. Is this how you treat guests? <laughs> did you just fart, Eric? Sorry, honey. What did you call me? Tinsel? <laughs> Come on, Tinsel, this is our house. You can't override us in our house. <laughs> tell her, Eric. He's not going anywhere. Come sit here. You're gonna learn about politics. No, he's not. Tell her we're going to watch football today, Eric. Mm. <laughs> Try me. I'm going to go meet Adam down at the stock with all his cougars. I'll watch the game there. You two enjoy your Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. Who's a good boy? Good boy.
I go back and forth from liking that we're an all-girl band and not liking that we're an all-girl band because sometimes if you're not thinking about it, we didn't intentionally form an all-girl band and then people will go, oh, it's an all-girl band. So that, those times, I don't like it, but then, I don't know, it's, it's nice to have an all-girl band because there's so many all-dude bands too, so. Because it's so heavily male dominated, um, you don't see a lot of girls being the front person and when they when there are girls front person there's maybe the sound crew that's doing everything for them. So we kind of have to playing instruments. Yeah, we have to fight for our own because often they don't believe that we know what we're talking about and sometimes and I shouldn't say they, I should say sound engin sound engineers are always pleasant, but every once in a while a male it's hard when you're dealing with a male sound engineer. You don't know if he's in a bad mood or if he just doesn't believe anything you say because you're a girl, which can be very frustrating. It had a lot to do with the three in the morning thing. The bars are all staying out, staying open later for um, north, by, uh, north, north by northeast. northeast. And we played at three in the morning. Everyone was drunk, and Sheezer had just played, so Sheezer. everyone was really pumped up. And then we went into our cover song "Praise You" by Fatboy Slim, and everyone just decided to come dance on stage with us, which was pretty cool. It was really fun, and then it got really scary because um, it was like as many people as possible were packed on the stage, knocking our boom mics away like, from I our mouths. I couldn't see the girls, because I'm sitting on the drums. Like. <laughs> we couldn't see each other. <laughs> yeah, and we're people trying were to cue each other. Hitting our instruments, and we were getting our body parts grabbed. It was my quite interesting. My keyboard power turn got off? Yeah. turned off, so my keyboard just shut off in the middle of the song. We just kept playing, and everyone was just loving it. It you was can, awesome. You can see the video on YouTube. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you just let her come into our house and boss us around like that. You know why, Stevie? Because I love her. What? Are you nuts? That chick's bananas. Don't you f***ing call her that. I'm in love with her. Guys, I'm in love with Tinsel. What? Hmm? I think I got Stockholm Syndrome. It's when you fall in love with your hostage takers. How the f*** can you love her when I love her? Well, I love her more. Well, I loved her first. I loved her second, and two is bigger than one. Well, second is the first loser. <laughs> well, I have Stockholm Syndrome, and it hurts.
So Ken Izzard, you're not you're not related at all to the British comedian, right? Eddie Izzard. Do people all ask you that? If yeah, I get it from time to time, but no, it's uh, I got the T at the beginning of mine too, right? It's the Tizzard, not the Izzard, and uh, T to the Izzard. The T to the Izzard. That sounds yeah, like, a, uh, like a like a like a hip hop song. Yeah, I don't know much about that, but <laughs> <laughs> you look like you could listen to some hip hop. Look how you dress. You got a lot of flavor. You all like got your thing going on. Oh well, you know, I just got up this morning. It was on the floor, so. Perfect. That's how it works. <laughs> so, so are you you fr are you fronting your own band for the first time? Yeah, I am. I've been I've been cultivating sort of a. I sort of pulled out of commercial mainstream rock a few years ago. I wanted to spend more time with my kids, and I wanted to do some music that uh, had a different flavor. Um, so, you know, I, I went through the sort of country folk singer songwriter thing for a while, and uh, somewhere in that process, I fell in love with pedal steel, and I started playing that, and then I put some distortion on it, put it through some amps, and put together a rock and roll trio, and. Now it's this weird sort of country rock thing, yeah. Who's that? The Robert Randolph or whatever. Robert Randolph, yeah. He's, he he's doing the funky thing, yeah. This is this is more the country. You bring rock more like you bring a little more wave to. It's almost like just one shade below Sammy Hagar, Rock the Nation, Montrose, or something. <laughs> you know, right? you know, you know, you know, no, it's not Rock the Nation. Bad Motor Scooter. Yeah, well, uh, it's, that was the first time I heard a distorted lap steel. Yeah, it's 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 a pretty heavy sound. I, I play a twelve string Universal too, so I mean, when I hit those big open chords, it's just it's Massive, it's a huh? it's a wall of tone. Yeah, it's pretty neat. <laughs> So now, did you, so you start writing this whole thing. Is it hard to have a massive, clear uh, sound and still find the, the subtlety in country music when you when you when you're doing this? Well, the great thing about the, the pedal steel is, you know, uh, like I say, you know, you, you strum a big sort of ten-string open chord with distortion. It's massive, but you know, you turn the distortion off and start noodling with a little volume pedal, and it gets real pretty and tinkly. And you can you can bring it from from you know from George Jones to you know uh, Foo Fighters, you know, just with the click of a button. So mm. it's uh, it's it's pretty easy to control that. That's pretty. That's pretty funny because I was reading a. I think it was your description. Or somebody handed me a description and they said, Husker Du meets Grace Jones meets uh, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. I'm like, wow.
The gay and queer community is very important to us, but um, being in Toronto, it took a long time for them to warm up to us. So we just kind of made our way and like playing anything and everything. We're kind of okay with that. We're just a fun kind of band that don't really think about gender and sexuality. But yeah, like it is that. very important to play those events. Like we played um, in Peterborough at a, um, what was the event? It was like a young... It was it's Peterborough Pride. Pride. Yeah, <laughs> and it was like their queer youth, which to me is the most important show that I will ever play. Starting out, like, fundamentally, we are just an indie yeah. band. Um, doing this sort of grassroots DIY thing in Guelph. So, yeah, one foot in, one foot out is, I guess, how we'd like to stay. Yeah. <laughs> We're trying to be not trying, it just comes naturally. We're just a sexy <laughs> band. <laughs> and not it's, awkward. Uh, it's about letting go of any inhibitions and just going for what you want. Um, just our seven inches out, it's available. Two songs. And which is two songs. And our full length is out. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Trying to stay in the moon Buy yourself another Hope it keeps you going Learn to dance all by yourself
It's such a British name. Are you not? Are you, your mom and dad must come from England, right? Well, Frost. Really Frost? Thank you. <laughs> you don't know too many Frosts, I bet. Frost is, it is English. It's English, like it's Jack my, Frost. It's my middle name. But my last, my real last name is actually very British as well. What is it? Montague? And not, not entirely English, though. Samuel I mean, Smith? No. What is your last Davis. name? Davis. That's not so. I mean, it's. It's actually be... Welsh. It's Welsh. Oh, of course. But, but the oh, of course. It's close enough. Really, it is, for really. Me. It's still all over there across the pond. I loved your set so much because it was, it was unlike any, anybody I've had on the show. And I've done a lot of TV shows over the 20 years as, as an artist, and I don't think I've seen anybody it was quite. It was like you took the Manhattan transfers and mixed it with a little bit of college indie folk with a with a with a Texas guitar, uh, twangy, right. uh, you Tex -Mex. know, Tex-Mex, little Tex-Mex, uh, Joe King Carrasco on the guitar or whatever. It was like, uh, where did you come up with this combo? Hmm. Well, I've been doing music for a long time, so I've had cocktail bands, and so there's a bit of loungy stuff thrown in, and then I also write stuff behind the scenes, and then I kind of merged it at one point. Yeah. So I did the cocktail thing, then I wrote my own stuff, and then it kind of merged, and then now it's 
it's it's that. But well, you can still hear that. I could still listen to like one of those chill CDs. I could put yours on and listen to it and kind of get into what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that was really really. Unique. I just saw that you know, when we had your, your choir, you said I'm coming with a choir, right? And I, I'm picturing like, you know, five black people with uh, choir outfits on. And you have these like little hipster people coming in when the <laughs> chick looks like Pat Benatar. And I'm like, what kind of <laughs> choir is that? It's, uh, but they were really cool. It, in, when they were backlit, it did look like that Queen, the Bohemian Rhapsody video. Right. Awesome. <laughs> It was a, such a pleasure to have you on the show. You have such a unique sort of blend of your whole ensemble musically and, you, mm, and you're you. fantastic.
What are you guys doing? Cleaning. And you? Reading about politics. Tinsel, I'm thoroughly convinced I'm the man that you need to be with. Um, no. Um, I am. No, I am. I am. I am. I am. No, I am. I am. I am. I am. Okay, 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 guys, that's really nice and all, but um, I think I found the guy that I really like. He's um, got this like flowy hair and this like pudge all over him. Total classic rock god. Tell us what's going on. Eric, you need to clean them dirty socks of mine. Adam, scrub those dirty drawers. And boys, use that OxyClean, because I don't want to see them stains. Tinsel! Now, do you go back and you search the songs and you say, okay, I'm gonna find this, this elements of this kind of song, but I'm gonna apply this sort of sonics to it to create my own? You know, it's, um, I don't do a lot of research. When it comes to pedal steel, especially, I mean, you know, most of the players out there are country guys, either country or jazz, you know? And um, there, there's, no, there's not a lot of people singing and playing the instrument. Um, I've, always, I've always been of the mind of, uh, of taking something unusual and, uh, Having a different application for it, you know, when I when I first started doing solo stuff, my first thing was a six-string bass uh, voice and uh, a bass thing. It was kind of like a Nick Drake sort of moody singer-songwriter thing, mm -hmm. uh, and I toured around doing that for a while. And that was that was a hard gig to do in front of you know 200 drunk people on a Saturday night. <laughs> yeah, all sensitive. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it, it it sort of turned into something. You know, it inevitably got me to play with the Toronto Symphony and stuff, and and it it it, it put me into a different thing. And and this is something again. It was just one of those things where I just. You know, I grew up listening to punk rock, um, and I like uh, the stuff I do is kind of singer-songwriter country stuff, and I just kind of blend it together. I don't really have any formula, and there's no real research to be done. You know? Well, every once in a while, you can break through with something, right? But if you're going to do something different, you got to break the rules. I you know? agree. And I agree. Uh, otherwise, you're following other people's molds, you know? Uh, you know, bands like the Pixies and Nirvana and, and the Foo Fighters that spawned out of that. I mean, you know, when they did it... You, you said it exactly right, though. It was the Pixies and then they... The fig, and then, well, yeah. then Kurt liked the Pixies and then, and then Foo Fighters. Right? Well, I mean, the first time I heard the Pixies, I, I, I loved it. I was just like, this will never get played on radio. And at the time, it didn't. But now, I'll be in a Kmart and I'll hear, like, you know, Pixies playing over the speakers. It sounds like the softest music in the world. Yeah. Yeah. But they created something that started, you know, a whole sort of other movement. And that's kind of what you got to do. You have but a that takes a lot that of chance. way. I hope so. No, I don't you know. will. You do. You do absolutely because you don't have. You have less of the burnout factor. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's. I've always said. You know, when I'm when I'm bored or tired or not enjoying it, I, I move on because, you know, the, the money and the fame and the glory and all that stuff. It's it's really all crap. Uh, if you're not doing it for the right reasons and not doing it because you love it, it's it's just it's just going to kill you. It's, it's not worth it otherwise. <laughs> If I can hear some really loud 10-string lap steel guitar rocking through a Marshall amp, I think I'd like to hear that. <laughs> you ever going to do a country western version of uh, Bad Motor Scooter? You know something? I, I, I've thought <laughs> about that. The lyric don't work. <laughs> I've thought about a bunch of sort of my favorite rock tunes and, and sort of bringing them in as covers. And, uh, and I've done it, I mean, you know, playing out as a band every now and again, you know, you, you're playing somewhere and uh, I'll pull out like um, everything from, well, you know, the, the stuff you'd expect, like the Tom Petty's. Um, you know, Cheap Trick or Brian Adams, and sort of, yeah. you know, you do a rockin' version of Summer of 69 with a, with a pedal steel and a trio, and people are like, what the hell is that? Right, right, so right. It's always a bit of fun, or some Billy Idol from time to time, you know, I'll, I'll take some of my old favorites and do a little bit of a sort of country rock version of their stuff. You're still like a real rocker at heart, though, it sounds like to me, like, dude, maybe in your, your approach to who you are as a human being. I mean, you look like a rock and roll guy. You know, yeah. I've, been, I've, been playing, I've been playing music since I was, you know, uh, since I was 12, and it's... I had a job at Subway once when I was a teenager, but I've never had a job. I, I, just, I, I dedicated, at that point, point in time when I fell in love with music, I said, this is going to be it. And, I, and along the way throughout my life, I've given up everything to pursue it. Uh, somewhere along the way, I managed to find a fantastic wife, and we've had some great kids. And that's the only other thing that's come into my life. I mean, my, my mind is pretty, it's, it's pretty one focused, and that's, that's you know, music and family, that's it. <laughs> Sounds like you got a good level ahead. Uh -huh. Ken Izzard here. Sounds like he's pretty together. Hey, well, thank you for coming on the show. 
Thanks, and uh, I find your uh, story very inspiring. I and I'm glad that, that you uh, emphasize on the hard work ethic because I think a lot of people out there just think it's too easy and don't work really hard, hard enough at it. Everybody just wants to be famous now. They don't even know what they want to do. They just want to be famous. Yeah, because right? yeah, <laughs> it's, it's kind of easy to be famous. You just got to go be lame and go on a reality show. <laughs> kind of like my show. It's so magnificent here That I got no words to say If I had my way I'd never leave But there's no way I can stay Change comes in many ways Big decisions get made for you Then I want to stand my ground on my two feet God knows that I've still got some words to do And I want to give it all to you Give it all to you Give it all to you How did I go around Not see you every time I pass through your door How'd it come to be that I was so afraid That I never spoke no more Never wanted to stay inside But out here, out here it's cold as hell Never wanted things to always stay the same But then again, I guess it's just as well And I want to give Yeah.